Hi guys, today I'm going to make a uh, sausage and kale soup. And this was inspired by a video I saw, not, not really a video, it was a cooking show I saw many years ago with Rachel Ray. And she did uh, chorico or something like that in kale. And chorico is not available where I'm at, so I'm using this uh, chorizo and kale. And uh, what I've got to do here is I've got to uncase all of these and just put them in the pan. And what I'm using here is I'm just using a standard uh, porcelain Dutch oven. You could use a big pan if you don't have one of these. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little olive oil right here. And my chorizo. And if you can get... Uh, Portuguese sausage, which is called chorico or chorris in certain places. Uh, I would recommend doing that. Or you can use really any sausage you want to. It could be a cabasa, uh, just an Italian sausage, or any kind of Portuguese or whatever type sausage that you want to use. It turns out really, really good, and it's great for a really cold day, which right now is a really cold day. It's uh, about 15 degrees outside. Uh, it's snowing like crazy. Uh, I've got a bunch of uh, food on board, so expect a couple of videos here in the next few days. And uh, I'm not going anywhere, really, because as many of you know, I live on a boat, and as long as my electricity's on, I'm in good shape. So I just plan on emptying out my DVR tonight, watching a bunch of movies, getting a nice warm comfort food going, which this is going to be. Like I say, this is really great for a cold day. Uh, makes awesome leftovers too. And I'm just going to make a huge pot of this. I'm just going to use all of my sausage here. It's about a pound. And uh, this chorizo comes to me raw, so that's really all that's available in my small local grocery store. So I've just turned on my burner and we're going to get that browning. So we got that going together here. Now, as you can tell, I've already uh, chopped up my potatoes, onions. I've got about six cloves of garlic. I got about two onions here, two potatoes. I've got some bay leaf and we're just going to get it started with this. Unfortunately, as cold as it is, it's going to take my uh, pot a little bit of time to get up to speed so in the meantime I'm just going to break this up and what I'm using is a wooden fork I get these at the dollar store for like three for a dollar so when I'm done with it I don't even have to worry about getting that cleaned up all I do is just throw that one away and move on to the next one so uh, let's get this going here a little bit and in the background, let me tell you what I've got here. I've got, I, I've got my potatoes, I've got my onions, which once I get this started cooking, I'm going to add those. Then after I've done those for a few minutes, I'm going to add this kale that I've got here. And this uh, garlic, I've already minced up. I've got a can of diced tomatoes, a can of chickpeas that I've already uh, pulled uh, all of the liquid out and rinsed them out with water. And I've got some, just a basic box of chicken broth here. I've also got a little bit of water because in stage two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this uh, kale and water to the pan after I've already browned up this uh, sausage. And it's smelling really good right now. But anyway, when I add the kale, uh, as you can see, that's a big batch of kale right there. And that kale is just going to wilt down a little bit. Well, it's going to wilt down a lot. And it's going to give this a whole lot of flavor and texture. And right now with this, I uh, don't know how, how well you can see it. This is going to take a little bit of time to brown. So maybe I'll cut into this video. Maybe I won't. But yeah, uh pretty interesting with the chorico is a little different and it's it is a little spicy smelling I can smell that right now but uh, I'm gonna get that browning up 
real good. And from there, uh, you know what? I, I think we're going to be good. It's a soup. I'm going to just go ahead and add all of my onions in right now while I'm doing that browning process and my potatoes because I would like my potatoes to go ahead and get started. That way I can move on to my kale here. So we'll get all this in the, in the pot right here. And the nice thing about this soup is there's going to be plenty of it. So if you have a few people around, you know, you can go through it that way. Or you can freeze it or you can refrigerate it for later use. And that's really what I'm going to do. Because really no one's crazy enough to be on this boat with me. So <laughs> can't say I blame them. And uh, let me get this going here. Give this about five minutes. Get my kale started. And... Then I'm going to add my garlic. Uh, so I'll be back to you here in just a second. Okay, so I'm back and uh, my vegetables are doing pretty well. So is my sausage. And I'm just going to stir them up a little bit. And you can see all that steam coming off of here. So what I want to do now is I just want to ensure that that steam stays in there. So I'm just going to put a little splash of water in the bottom. And that will keep things moist and going. And in the meantime, I'll stir that up just a little bit. Yeah. And I'm going to form kind of like a little hole in the bottom there. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my garlic, which I've moved over to this paper towel here, just so I could use my cutting board, and my bay leaves. So just drop those in like so. Let those get going a little bit. And you just want to give your garlic like a minute or two to, you know, you don't want to burn it or anything. Just give it like a minute or two to incorporate a little bit. The bay leaves are going to be real good in there. And now at this point, I've got a little bit of liquid to create some steam. So I'm going to need about two minutes on my greens. Now you see I've gotten a lot of greens out of these and I've cut them down to about an inch or two. And I'm just going to stuff them in the top here like so. Now I still have more, but this is about all I think I really want in here that it's really going to fit. And I'll just take my uh, what's left here and just put them in. And now we're just going to put the lid on them and let them wilt for about two minutes. About two minutes is all it's going to take. And then from there I'm going to go ahead and add my uh, garbanzo beans, which is chickpeas. I'm going to add my diced tomato and my chicken broth. And then we're just going to let it stew for a little while. I'm going to I'm going to keep that water in reserve in case I need it, but I don't know exactly what it's going to be like now. So uh, I will meet you back here in about two minutes. Hi there. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes, and I don't believe my wheat and my leaves have wilted down that much, but I really don't want to get a burn going here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a little more water just to make sure that I don't have anything happening there on the bottom that's adverse to making this soup. But you can see that they have wilted down a little bit. So at this point, uh, the best thing for me to do is just go ahead and start finishing off the soup. And this will continue to wilt down as the soup gets going. So the next thing I want to do is I want to take a box of chicken broth. and add that to this so that we have plenty of liquid going on here and you can use any broth you prefer a lot of people say use a low sodium name brand stuff whatever I get this for like a dollar fifty so it makes a real cheap soup and it works for me alright I'll go ahead and stir this in a little bit make sure I don't have any bits burnt to the bottom and from there, you can see that as, as the water is getting to this, the leaves have really wilted. I, now, I could add more if I want to. I don't really want to. I want this soup to kind of stand on its own and not just be a kale soup. So uh, I've got plenty of potatoes, onions, garlic in there at this point. So at this point here, now that I've got that all incorporated, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add my 
tomatoes, just a can of diced tomatoes, any, any diced tomato will do, or you can dice your own, and garbanzo beans or chickpeas. Go ahead and put that in there and season it with a little salt and pepper. And you're going to want to taste this before you take it off and see exactly, you know, if you, if you need to add more, take some away or whatever. And I'm not going to go too crazy with the salt because I did have uh, the sodium, whatever it is, uh, chicken broth there. So I'm going to give this a nice little stir. Looks pretty good already. I mean, I've, I've made this a hundred times. It's been a while since I have. But, uh, yeah, this is a real hearty soup. Uh, you can see just how thick everything is. And it's just a wonderful way to warm up and give some great flavor and smells to your kitchen on a nice cold day. So, back on with the lid, and say I'm going to turn that down to about medium, and I'll uh, come back in a little bit later in the process, and we'll see where we're at. All right, I'm back. I've been tending my soup, and I've been checking it out and everything. And, you know, when I said whatever I said before, something like 15 minutes or whatever, I think I was off. I let it simmer for a good 45 minutes and I noticed a whole lot of flavor built up and all the flavors started to meld together. By the way, I'm taking my bay leaves out, throwing them in the trash. We don't need those anymore. Now you could have cut your kale a little, little finer than I did. Now you notice a coarse cut and plus I left some stems in there. Not very visually appealing, but at the same time, you know, they, they still taste great. And just look at that soup. I mean, it's like 12 degrees outside, and I just can't get over, and I've had this soup many times, and before I turned the camera back on, I made sure that I seasoned it to taste with the right salt and pepper, and you can add other things if you want to. Uh, you could certainly add more vegetables or less vegetables or, you know, water it down a little bit more. You know, this, this probably could have been... A wetter soup if I wanted it to be but look at that isn't that just pretty much heaven in a bowl for a cold night I think so so anyway I'm gonna put this here I'm gonna go ahead and cap this and just let it sit here and not so much simmer but just kind of let all the flavors meld together for my next uh, meal on it and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in some uh, containers refrigerator or freeze it or whatever but I'm going to dip this nice crusty bread into it and I'm going to sit back here and watch TV shows that I've recorded because I can't get any TV right now because of the weather. We're having snow and nastiness and this is just going to be awesome. By the way, I added some more pepper to it. I, I found it, you know, once again, you, you know, season it to taste. And I think people are going to love this if, if you serve it up to them. I really hope you try it. Please try it. This is pretty much the basic recipe. And you can add uh, whatever you want to. You could add celeries to it, to it. You could add carrots to it. You could take away something if there's something you don't like. You could definitely change on the sausage component. You could use kielbasa. I've done that before. Uh, you know, if you're not into chickpeas, you know, don't use them. There's a lot of ways you can go with this. But if you make it this way here, it's just a really hearty, wonderful, warm, heartwarming, comfort food soup. And I hope you try it. If you do, please let me know in the description down below, in the comments, you know, exactly, you know, what you did, if you did anything different or whatever, and how it turned out. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I hope to catch you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.